Greetings, my fellow humanoid dwellers. I create videos on technology and other random things. If you like this video, you might like others. If you don't like this video, you still might like others. Consider subscribing to my channel or checking out my Patreon page. If you already subscribe, hit that bell. In this video, we're going to display data on a web page. We're going to use a scripting language called PHP, which if you watched a previous video, I show how to install when we set up the Raspberry Pi. We're also going to use the sensor from the last video. We're going to go back through the directory of the Raspberry Pi so you can get the name of the sensor that you'll need to complete this video. After you log into the Pi, you want to change your directory to a certain location. We're going to do it the long way by just typing in cd dot dot you could do cd slash sys slash bus slash w1 we could do all that but I want to do it one step at a time just to take our time and show you how to change directories because when you first log in you're sitting in your home directory if you want a shortcut you can start typing it in and then hit the tab key and now if we do an ls, it'll show what's in this directory, and we're looking for a 28 dash something. You're going to want to note that yours will be different than mine in this video, but you're going to want to note that if you do not have this in there, you're going to want to go back to the video previous to this and figure out where you went wrong. If you can't figure it out, post a comment, and I'll try and get back to you on that. Now, in order to display the data, we're going to have to create a file in the directory that will show up on the web page and if you remember I did some previous tutorials on that also but we have to go back to the var www.html directory we'll do an ls on here and you'll see that some of the old files that we've dealt with before are still there in this case we're going to go ahead and we're going to make a .php file in this example we're going to use nano to create the file. It's only a single file. We should be able to do everything on one file to collect and display the data. I'm going to call this temperature.php. PHP is just a scripting language. All you're doing is automating commands that you could do yourself so we can change directories ourselves, we can open files ourselves, we can read files ourselves, and we can close files ourselves. So the first four commands are just going to be that. When using a scripting language though, sometimes you need a certain context. And in this case you have to start each PHP file with a less than question mark and a PHP. And you have to end the PHP file with a question mark and a greater than sign. In scripting languages, you can create variables. I like to think of them as containers that contain things. And variables in PHP start with a dollar sign. The first variable we're going to make is a file location. And this is what we're going to store the file location in. And then we're going to go ahead and open that file and we're going to store it in a container or variable called the file. And this will contain the file itself. We're going to use fopen open the file and we've already put the location in another container so all we have to do is use that container but then we have to put a comma and we have to say whether we want to read or be able to write to that file in this case we're just going to read from it we've opened the file and we have a container that contains the file but the file contains more information than just the text so in order to get the contents of the file we have to read it so our next variable is going to be the contents we're going to file read and then we have to give it the name of the container that we used in the previous line. The other thing it's going to ask for though is the maximum length that this file can be. We're going to put 200. It'll be longer than anything we'll need. Our final step is going to be to go ahead and close the file. We don't want to keep it open for any longer time than we need. Then for the web portion of it, now that we have it and we have the content stored in a variable or a container, we can echo it to the screen. And that should be it. If we save this and we go to our web now, 
and we type in our local address, you can see that we get the Apache default page. And then if we put a slash in it and type in temperature.php, we should get an output. And we get the readout. And you can see down here, this is the temperature reading. We talked about this in the last video too. This would be 21.187 degrees centigrade. Now we're going to go back in and we're going to tweak the PHP file just a little bit just to show you a couple other commands um, to help you get started. Then you can always go through and Google some of the commands to get a little more knowledge on them and change them. So we'll go back to the Raspberry Pi now. We'll go back into the um, Nano. We're going to add a, what's called a BR tag. If you remember in HTML everything is that doesn't print out on the page is a tag and you surround them with the greater than less than symbols. And what this will do is this is going to create a space between the uh, the two things that we output. And what we want to find out is we want to find out the length. Up here we said 200 but I believe that this is always going to be very close to the same length of file no matter what the temperature is. So we're going to go ahead and print out the length of the string. And in PHP it's just string length is strlen. And string is another is the type of variable or the type of container that we're using. And we're going to get the length of the file contents. And we would save this. We're going to go back to the browser and we're going to refresh it. And the length of this is 75 characters. Now, if we decided that we only wanted to get the temperature portion of this, we can get just the last five characters. In PHP, you can get a substring. This would be considered a string, this whole line here. And you can get what's called a substring, and shortcut for that is S-U-B-S-T-R, substring. And you can define whether you want to start from here and get so many characters from the front, or you can start from the back and go backwards so many characters. We're going to just try and lop off this 21250. We're going to put another BR tag in there, and then we're going to echo substring of the file contents and we're going to go negative six because so I think we want to go one in front of the one I'm, I'm guessing there but I believe that's how we do it so you would you want the last five so you go back six and then you start up we'll see if we get the equal sign or not save this Exit. And we refresh this. And we get 21187, which is that. And it's still 75 characters. Not that that matters, because if you just make sure that the number is greater than 75, we'll always print out the whole thing. We'll go back to the code one more time. And what we did is we used PHP, which is a scripting language, to locate the file and open the file in read-only mode. And then we read the contents into a container, a string-type container. And the maximum number of, of characters we wanted to read out of there was 200. If we had set this at 75, we would be fine. If we set it at less than 75, we would not have gotten all the characters. And then we close the file. Then we went ahead and printed out the file contents. And then we printed out the length of the file contents. And then we just chopped off the end of the file contents. And what you can do now is if we go back to here and we refresh it, 
you can see that the temperature changes over time. If I were to put, I'm going to hold it between my fingers for a few seconds and then run it one more time. That was about five seconds. And you can see that it went up to 27 degrees Celsius. And so this is a way to read out this temperature, but every time you want to see it, you'll have to refresh the screen. In the next example, we're going to go ahead and make it look a little prettier. We're not only going to use PHP, but we're going to also um, use another scripting language called JavaScript, and we'll also use HTML to make it look a little bit better. That's about it for this video. Thanks for watching.